from, from Toyota. And then, of course, it is captured in TQM, Total Quality Management. So that's what you see up there, TQM, uh, Plan, Do, Check, Act. So what we need to do is to understand, I'm starting to pull this together, that Agile has its own Plan, Do, Check, Act cycle. But now what we need to do is to balance that with a Plan, Do, Check, Act cycle on the business side. And for that, we need Lean Startup. So if you look back to what Toyota had, they said, listen, we're going to put things out there and everybody on the line is going to have a Kaizen group. Right? Do you know what a Kaizen group is? Who's heard of Le uh, Toyota and the product TPS? So tell us what a Kaizen group is, sir. Uh, change for the better. Change for the better. Good change. That's what literally it means in Japanese. Kaizen, good change or change for the better. Who implements those changes? Pardon? Behind, uh, the people on the line, the workers themselves <laughs> implement a learning cycle. They'll do something, they'll try it out, and every now and then they'll have a Kaizen group and they'll implement, a cha they'll implement changes for the better. So this stuff is fairly well known. If you don't know, you can go and look up you know, Taichi Ono and Edwards Deming and the stuff that they, uh, the work that they've done, you know, 50, 60, 70 years now. Now, if you carry this forward to the product side, think of, think of products, software products, or just products in general, Many of you in your book club should recognize this book. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the book that's been, that created this movement and sort of bring, brought it together. Uh, it's a book by a guy called Eric Ries. And he said, you know, the Toyota framework of Plan, Do, Check, Act can be applied to product development. Except on, in product development, he calls it build, measure, learn. Right? So he took out, the, instead of a four-step learning cycle, he's called it, he made it a three-step learning cycle. And he said, you build something, you measure it, you learn. Who's heard of this? Build, measure, learn. Eric, anybody? Lean startup? Okay, so that's the premise, basic premise of the lean startup, that uh, when we come up with an idea, before we actually start developing it, we, we need to do what they call customer development, or we need to build something, measure it, we're going to learn it. Right? So that's the learning cycle. We, we have to know our customer, start small, fail fast. I think Alex said this, you know, let's go out and wrap, let's start building a whole bunch of stuff, if you're going to fail, let's build something quickly, fail fast, and learn from that. And then seek customer validation. Right? So that's Lean Startup. The other way, if you look at Agile, uh, excuse me, Lean, Lean gets implemented on Agile teams. Now, many of you know these, this uh, Agile is not one single methodology. It's Scrum, it's XP on Kanban. And on an Agile team, as I showed you, you know, we have a product backlog, and we learn on the delivery side. Now, the question is, we have learning on the delivery side, and now we have learning on the pr product development side. How do we combine this? And here's what we've been working on. We say, okay, once we have lean and agile, there's another thing that we have to consider. Who's working on software product development? Certainly the rally guys are pro software product development. Anybody else in that space? Yes, sir. Uh, what kind of product are you building? Uh, internal pricing, pricing system. Internal pricing system. Anybody else? Ma'am? HR software. Uh, website development. Website development. What kind of website? Like for what customers? Uh, for guests or uh, Carnival. Carnival. Okay, so Carnival. So that's a uh, pretty interesting thing. Um, any other examples? E-commerce. E-commerce. Yes, ma'am. CRM. CRM. Credit card processing. Credit card processing. And we had somebody in the back, I think, had their hands up. Yes, sir. BI. BI, Business in Intelligence. So whatever product we build, and you, you guys came up with some pretty heavyweight things like HR systems, uh, e-commerce, credit card processing, BI, uh, whatever type of product we have, we, we need to build into our products a certain amount of design thinking. And design thinking is this idea that when we, as human beings, use a product or when we are attracted to a product, it's not just because of the performance. There's something more subjective about what a product is. There's a part of our brains, it's called the limbic part of the brain, limbic, L-I-M-B-I-C. And the limbic part of our brain creates what we call meaning out of the life around us. Right? So when a product appeals to us, when let's say, you know, the usual suspects like an iPhone or uh, what's the best, what do you think is a really good product that, that you feel is love? This is awesome. This is, I really love the way this works. Um, and I use this product every day and I find it very intuitively to use. Give me an example. And don't say iPhone, iPad, because the, <laughs> that's what everybody phone. thinks of. What's that? Android phone. Android phone. Are you an Android user? And so when you like that uh, particular device? It's old. But it's old, and why do you like it? You've held on to it, obviously. Yes. Kind of emotionally attached to it. Mm -hmm. so, so why why do you like it? What's, what's <coughs> the simple? 
Um, I like the fact that it uh, does just about everything I need to, but it that it's open that I can install whatever I want to. You, it's it's flexible. I'm sorry? And it's not Apple. And it's not Apple. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. I mean, whatever works. Any, any other examples of products that you guys use? My car. Your car. What kind of car did it is? A Honda Civic. Yes, sir. Honda Civic. Tell us. So, all right. You, uh, tell us why you love the Honda Civic so much. One of the things I like is that I step away from it and I forget to close the lock the door. It locks itself. All right. So, think about that. That is design. That's an excellent example of design thinking because they've designed that with the, uh, with the, uh, with the end customer in, uh, in, in, my, in mind. Right? How about you, sir? What do you, what do you like about the uh, Honda Civic? Oh, quality. Yeah. So you, so you love the quality and the reliability. Yes, sir. How about you? Yep. The iPad. Show and tell. There you go. So you got the iPad. You like that because? Because it's a mobile. Yep. Yep. So um, the neat thing about the iPad is that it, is that it, it has almost cross generational appeal. My kids love the iPad, and it's kind of intuitive. My daughter will sit and play like games on them. And my father-in-law, who's 78 years old, and he's not much of a, you know he barely he can do email with some difficulty. He loves the iPad. <coughs> we had some trouble getting him onto a laptop, and we had trouble getting him onto a desktop. But he just took to the iPad overnight. It's like he can expand the stuff. He can he can't see. Uh, he, he can't see too well, but he's too proud to admit that. <laughs> so, so when he can use the, iP the iPad and expand the text, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I got this, don't worry. And so, uh, and so what, these, what these products have incorporated, like the iPad, like the Honda Civic, or the Android phone, is an appeal that transcends performance. We say they're able to have not only the function, but there's also a sense, and they appeal to both not only our rational brain, but also our limbic brain, and so we get attached to it. So um, Al over here has been attached to that Android for how many years? Four years. Yeah, there's like four years. So we get emotionally attached to them because they appeal to us. So there's, there's more than just saying something, building something around performance and, um, uh, you know, uh, and uh, efficiency and stuff. We have to figure out what, what is it about a product that appeals to the other parts of our brain as well. All right, let's pull this together. When we do this, what we have to say uh, or what we have to do is to iterate, learn, use our plan to check our cycle to design. Now those folks at Honda, I'm sure it when they came up with that particular uh, feature, that one is interesting that when you leave it, it locks on its own. How do you think they came up with that feature? Did, do you think some genius designer in Honda just you know, sat in a room and like meditated and it's like, ooh, yeah, it came to me. Oh yeah, let's have like a They talk to possibly, it's not just talk to people because if you ask people, you know, if, it, if somebody had asked you what kind of feature you wanted in the Honda Civic, what would you have said? I would never have thought of that. You would never have thought of that. I know, I'll say that with confidence because I would never have thought of that. How do you think they discovered that feature? Yes, sir. Yeah, but it's not just the asking. Yes, ma'am. They watch it. There's there's something called ethnographic observation. In design thinking, they watch what what people are doing. So they're probably observing you right now. Right? If they're not doing it, <laughs> and if they're not doing it, the NSA is doing it. Somebody's watching us, and they're like, "What are these people doing?" And if if they're not doing, you know that Nest is checking your. You know, why is Nest so valuable to Google? 3.2 billion, because they're, they're going to track your behavior, and, and that lets Google into your home. You had, somebody had a question back there. I was going to say, they look for a problem in the behavior in the community, and they fix it to make a lifestyle. That's right. They, they don't necessarily ask you for a solution. They say, we think there's a problem here, or we're watching, we're watching people use our products, and we've, we, they've encountered a problem, and they fix it. But what they do is then they use a lean startup method to validate that, so that that is actually a problem before building a solution. And we're going to talk about that coming up. All right? So anyway, this, if you put this stuff together, we've got lead startup, we've got agile, we got, um, and we have design thinking. Essentially what we have to do is, your name, sir, at the back? Louis L. Louis L? Yes. All right. 
So as Lucell said, they said, you know, we have an idea. We've identified a problem. But besides Jackie, we're gonna look, we're gonna go and observe 50 Honda dealers. Excuse me, not dealers. Forget the dealers, we don't wanna. The, uh, no, she said Honda Civic. Oh, no, yeah. If, he's Toyota as well? Well, I wanna talk, I'm specifically using her example because it's a nice one. So she said she likes the auto lot, right? So uh, what, what the Honda designers probably will probably do is they'll say, well, um, we've observed this problem. It looks like that when people leave their cars, it's unlocked and would, we, uh, we think there's a problem there. So let's validate that this is actually an issue. They would say, let's go out and either watch people or talk to people and ask them uh, and validate that there's a problem. So they have an idea, but before they design a solution, they'll actually validate the problem. So they'll say, let's talk to 50 people and if 25 of them or slight majority, 26 of them agree that there's a problem or we see them having a problem, we'll validate the problem. And then let's talk about a solution. So before they build anything, they're going to go out and look at customers and look at who's actually, who actually has that problem. This is what we call customer development. Right? It's part of customer discovery of customer development in the lean startup community. Then we say, okay, we validate this idea. Now let's come up with a solution. Now if you're building software site, we're not going to build any software. We'll come up with a mock-up, <coughs> some sort of you know, some diagram, or maybe like some if it's an HTML page, no code behind it. If it's um, if it's you know if it's a um, feature on the car, we'll say, well, why don't we build a little prototype and we we'll go uh, run it by some customers, pilot customers, and we'll see how they like it. Right? So we validated the idea. Now we've progressed and we are starting to validate the solution at low cost or no cost. Right? And well, our idea is that we progress in as lean a fashion from left to right. We're gonna validate the ideas, validate the solution, and then and only then, if these things become validated, then we'll design and build a solution. Does that make sense? So this is how we've, we pull together design thinking, lean startup experimentation, each one of these circles, and agile, right? And the agile comes in when we build it. I'm gonna show you some examples uh, with Sensei. Yes, sir. So how is this different from a focus group? when it comes to feedback before you go and build it. Okay, uh, how is this different from a focus group? Yes, sir. A focus group is you're trying to lead them to get them to tell you what they want. And the idea that you're bringing up is what Apple and other people and Google are doing is they're looking for situations of need.